If we break down Durkheim's definition of religion, we can identify five specific components that comprise his definition. So um, the first two are a pair and they're beliefs and practices. And as Durkheim says, they're beliefs and practices that exist in a unified system. So the beliefs confirm the practices, the practices confirm the beliefs they exist in this cycle. The second two are also a pair, the sacred and the profane. So they're, it's a unified system as it, uh, of beliefs and practices as they relate to the sacred and the profane. So beliefs, practices, sacred and profane. And the final component of religion is the church, as he describes it, or moral community, as he says in another place. Religion is not an individual thing. It's not something that I make up and I do for myself. Not that people don't do that, but that's not religion. Religion, from an anthropological perspective, is collective. It's, as, as Durkheim says, it's eminently a collective experience, a collective thing. So if we see that someone makes up beliefs and practices as they relate to the sake of the, the profane, and that individual is the only one who believes those things and practices those things and has an understanding, we would not recognize that as a religion and that would not be a study of a religion, not an anthropological study of religion. Um, how big does the group need to be for it to be called a religion? I'm actually going to leave that question unanswered and say that those are interesting conversations to have, but the moment that it becomes a collective thing, that's when it becomes, from an anthropological perspective, a religion.